By the end of this video, I'm going to show you why this is the ultimate form of null checking in Angular, but we're going to work our way up through the tier list from worst to best. And we're going to explain why this approach deserves the S rank along the way. Okay, so we're going to focus on one specific situation. I have a form and I want to take the values from that form and send it to this add method in my checklist service. Except we can clearly see that the TypeScript compiler is not happy about this. So my add method is expecting something with the type add checklist. And this checklist type is expecting a property of title with the type of string. But the title value that we get from the form is actually a string or null. So we've set this title value to a string right now, but it could potentially be null and the TypeScript compiler wants us to handle that. So the question we're solving in this video is how do we deal with this? So this is probably the easiest, but also the worst way. So what we're doing here is using a type assertion. We are saying this.checklistform.value as add checklist. So we're basically saying to the TypeScript compiler, hey, don't worry about it. I know you're worried about this being potentially null and everything, but it definitely won't be. You can just go ahead and treat this as the add checklist type. Now this might actually be useful and correct in some situations, but here we are just lying to the TypeScript compiler and lying to the TypeScript compiler is how we get runtime errors. The form values really could be null when this is submitted. So we shouldn't pretend that they can't be null. So next up, I'm bumping this one up a couple of ranks to the B grade, mainly because there isn't actually anything wrong with this approach. It's just a little bit awkward. So we need to make sure none of the values are null. So we just manually check them with this if condition here, and then we assign them inside of this new object. So this is safe because if the values are null, then this add method is never going to get triggered because this predicate here is going to fail. So this approach isn't so bad with just one value, but you would need to check every value you have in your form. And we sort of have this double handling of creating another object here. So depending on exactly how you go about it, this approach is a little bit awkward. To earn the A rank, you can utilize a TypeScript type guard, which is this fellow right here. So it's similar in concept to the type assertion with as, except we are using is now. So unlike as, where we just force our data to be a certain type, with a type guard, in order to be granted the type of add checklist, it must first pass a test. So we have the object that we want to test being passed into this function and to be granted the type of add checklist, this predicate here must return true. In this case, we check every value of the object passed in to make sure that it's not null, but you can write whatever kind of logic you want here. So we've created this type guard as a function called non null checklist. And then we are using that in our if condition here. And so this serves two separate purposes. So one is that this code here is only going to run if the object successfully passes this guard, because this is either going to return true or false. But as well as that, if it does pass the guard, TypeScript is also going to know that this is of the type add checklist. So you can see if I hover over form values here, we have our potential string or null value. But if I hover over this inside of our guard here, we can see that we now know that that form values is just an add checklist. And just to highlight this even more, let's say I add in an else condition here and we'll just log out form values. If I hover over form values in this else condition, you can see that in this case it is a string or null, but within this type guard check, it is just add checklist. So our object has passed the test and been granted the type of add checklist, but we can go further. What? The TypeScript type guard we just created is very specific to this one situation. And it would be a bit annoying to have to constantly recreate this every time we want to check some form values are not null. So to fix this and achieve the S rank, we can use a generic version of our guard. You can see it is the same basic idea here, except now we are passing in the type we want to assign to this object if it passes the test. 
So in this case, I'm giving it the type of add checklist if there are no null values, but I could give this whatever type I wanted as long as it is an object. So I've got this defined in my shared utils folder, so I can use this wherever I like in the application. So let's take a look at that. So again, we have the same general structure here as the normal type guard. We're creating this function that accepts an object, it assigns a type, and we have our predicate here that returns true or false based on however it's testing that object. The difference here is that we are using TypeScript generics. So this allows us to pass in any type as a parameter, which we are calling T, with the constraint that this type that is passed in must be an object. Then our type guard uses is T to assign whatever type we passed in, like add checklist, to the object if it passes this test. So it's exactly the same thing. We are just able to pass in the type we want to assign as a parameter. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, if you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to drop a like or subscribe. I hope the TypeScript compiler is treating you well, and I hope to catch you again in the next video.